of the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Oh, oh. Worship him. You're not wasting your time. This is part of the meeting. Take your eyes away from men and just focus on Jesus. We worship you in the spirit. We worship you in the truth. We worship you in the spirit. 
that's what we've come to do. We worship you in the spirit. We worship you in the truth. We worship you in the spirit. That's what we've come to do. Lord, we worship you in the spirit. We worship you in the truth. We worship you in the spirit. That's what we've come to do. We are here. This is why we are here. We have come with our hearts open, ready to receive from the rabbi of all the ages. We honor you, we worship you, we worship you. We pour our hearts like drink offerings before you. This is Mount Zion. The city of the living God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. The Bible declares they go from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. We thank the Lord for the privilege that is given. There is never a wasted moment in the presence of the Lord. You can have wasted moments before men, but not before the Lord. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, brethren, I commend you unto God. Ah, there's such mighty presence in this place I'm just I'm just sensing just like an infusion of spiritual power just impartations of strength happening impartations because the Holy Spirit whenever he's here he's here to do us good I commend you he says to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you have to understand and trust the value of god's presence one moment in his presence one moment in his presence can truly change your life hallelujah never be casual about the house of god never be casual about the word of god never be casual about an atmosphere where the holy spirit has been allowed to find expression there is no telling how far god is able to lift to build 
to change to transform the house of god is not a cinema center the house of god is more than a lecture room the house of god is more than a place of disseminating information it is the house of god the gate of heaven what makes the house of god all important is that god is there hallelujah many things happen when you are in the presence of god there are healings there are miracles the word of god comes to deconstruct faulty belief systems in a moment in a twinkling of an eye an ideology you may have sustained for a decade that sponsors cycles of defeat in your life one word accurately explained from scripture can bring you that deliverance hallelujah and then there are impartations an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities whilst you are seated you see many things happen to us when we're in the presence of god more than the man who is speaking there is the god who is walking moving from row to row moving from place to place moving from hall to hall searching the intents the hunger the expectations of men and then coordinating words that come to heal to bless to deliver so whilst you are seated here you will be amazed to know the kind of ascendance that you're having in the spirit physically you may be seated but in the realm of the spirit there is an elevation happening to you it's a law the law of transformation the bible says every time you truly behold you cannot remain at that level now the lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then it says we all with faces unveiled beholding the glory of god as in a mirror we are changed into what we are beholding the word of god does not just tell you what god can do it brings you into that experience why am i saying this because you see routine creates boredom in men naturally and so lest we get used to just coming to honor a church service coming to honor a program it is dangerous to be casual in the presence of god jacob said the lord was in this place and i knew not as powerful as his presence is lack of hunger and expectation can make it look as though god was not there I never take his presence for granted no and so every time make it a culture let it be an education that you receive tonight that every moment you have to spend in his presence don't just say I am coming to church don't just say I am coming to hear a man of God don't just say I'm coming to honor a meeting that was organized by a ministry it's more than that it is an encounter are we together this is very important I hope you know that this same presence that we seek is also sought after in heaven the same presence that we long for the angels and the saints in heaven live by that same presence it's not an inferior dimension that same presence that is the life-giving factor also in heaven please do not be casual about the presence of god more than healing more than deliverance more than people falling under the anointing the laborious activity of the holy spirit transiting people into better and greater expressions of the power the glory the grace of god this is his assignment and i'm telling you it takes a long time to achieve that in the spirit this is why we gather and gather again this is why we listen and listen again this is why we learn and we learn again because it takes a long time to build 
it takes a long time to produce men of stature I stand, I stand in all of you. I bow, I bow in all of you. I see, I see in all. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you, Jesus, something special, Supernatural about your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah! Something happens when I mention you are God from beginning. There's no place for argument. You are God. One more time. You are God. From beginning to the end. Help us, O oh Lord, grant us understanding tonight. We open our hearts to learn, to grow, to be built, to be established in righteousness. Spirit of the living God, we pray that the word of God would come with power. And tonight, the spirit and the bride says, come. Come healing. Come lifting. Come transformation. The spirit and the bride says, come advancement come prosperity come fresh fire the spirit and the bride tonight are in agreement and we say come in jesus name we pray amen god bless you give jesus a big big hand amen praise the name of the lord please be seated i'd like you to help me celebrate an awesome man of god in our midst tonight a veteran of the gospel, Apostle Goodheart Kweme. Thank you. Let's honor him. Koinonia, this is a house of honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Such an honor to have him in our midst. Amen. Please be seated. I honor and celebrate everyone here, politicians, men of God, um, businessmen, all who name the name of Christ. The Bible says we have all been called with a holy calling hallelujah praise the name of the lord i just felt stirred in my heart tonight to really reiterate and to remind us that we are as a global family we are a people of vision and we are a people of intention religion is man's quest to find the truth man's quest to find jesus and many times they come up with all kinds of ways and we have to be careful as we administer the life and the power of God because it is possible to just have the form of religion through the traditions of men and lose the power the presence and the life component may it never be that we get to a point where all we are doing is just a regular spiritual activity without power hallelujah it's important to know why we exist at the beginning of the during the inaugural service i took out time to share with us in great detail and 
Paul said, you see, this is part of the apostolic ministry. He says, I will not be negligent to bring you in remembrance of these things, although ye know them and are established in this present truth. Hallelujah. You should know, you must know why we exist. The vision is a system of check and balance. It, it defines the coordinates of how we administer the life and the power of God. It will always be and remain with respect to the call and with respect to the assignment. So that all of the topics, the teachings, the approach, everything comes in honor to the vision, in honor to the goal. This is how we achieve efficiency in the spirit. Hallelujah. I thought we'd have the time to do a quick review on the six points that I gave us, but we have to honor the time. There's a lot to deal with here. Tonight is going to be quite an encounter for many of us here. Hallelujah. And so I probably may ask media, can we have a minute or two to do that? Is that possible? All right, so I hope you can see it. They have beautifully expressed it in a way. I'll just give you a minute or two to look at it. I hope you can see it clearly. You have to understand this is the sixfold mandate that we have. Everyone who is connected to this vision from this city and our global family, it's important for you to know why we exist and it's important to know, help you know what we are about. Let me run it quickly in one minute. Number one, to help actualize the global harvest of souls the mission of souls the global harvest of souls it is it is a global mission that we must not ignore hallelujah that we together with other members of the body we are about the genuine salvation of souls number two to equip and build believers unto maturity unto stature through the revelation of god's word the only way believers can grow and attain maturity is through the accurate exegesis the communication of doctrine doctrine is the course curriculum that builds believers it brings maturity and it brings stability number three god has also helped and anointed and ordained us to be instruments of completion and balance the body of Christ for a very long time has suffered different shades of imbalances that have delved into error by well-meaning people. And so the Lord has raised us graciously and uniquely granted us access into superior dimensions of the counsel of God to the end that we be instruments that with the attitude of love and humility bring the body of Christ to a greater sense of completion and balance number four to demonstrate the reality of the love and the power of God through miracles signs and wonders bringing healings deliverances and transformation to men you have to understand this so it shouldn't be a thing of surprise when you see the demonstration of the Spirit of the Lord in all kinds of supernatural manifestations you have to understand that it is part of the grace and the equipping that we have received it doesn't have to be a miracle service anywhere we are gathered that grace speaks and it answers even now are we together number five to help strengthen the unity of the body of Christ as you know I have said it again and again that I am sent to the body of Christ and as a ministry even though organizationally speaking we maybe a ministry or I, I don't know how we'd look at it but then our assignment please keep that scripture there to send to bring unity to the body of christ there is such a state in the spirit called the unity of faith the bible says until we attain that point the unity of faith and finally to become a bridge of hope for visionary leadership and please correct that that is national transformation national transformation media you'd want to just correct that national transformation any listen the bible says we are the light of the world 
the salt of the earth that means the the benefit of our spiritual encounters must not only help us spiritually but it must be translated into a context that blesses society the church is a blessing and an advantage to society it is an advantage to civilization so if a businessman or a politician a governor or a president or whoever if you sit under this grace it shouldn't just be that it is only your spiritual life that is growing your intelligence as far as leadership and governance must also be affected are we together i believe in the power of influence and god has so honored us with great men and women of influence captains of industry politicians i owe you a duty under god to see that in addition to your spiritual growth you are equipped with the tools by the spirit reference from scripture that can help us to bring the kind of leadership that can transform society neither do men light a lamp it says and to put it under a bushel but you put it on top of the lampstand and it gives light to all those who are in the room that means there were people in the room even when there was darkness confused waiting for whoever is the light hallelujah this is very important we are about this week in week out all of our arms of expression all of the platforms in the ministry work in synergy to the end that this six point vision be achieved if for any reason and by any means we deviate from this then we're wasting our time the grace and the backing of god remains for as long as we are committed to this unified task the bible says write the vision it mandates to make it plain so that he will run that reads it are we together over the next few weeks i am going to be having very powerful and special teachings uh, and these teachings will be along the areas of all the graces that god has so graciously allowed to be at work in my life and in this ministry it is important for you to understand the graces that god has so invested in this ministry so that you can become a partaker but you see grace is administered through knowledge so there must be a, an accurate exegesis of the scriptural basis for the reception of these graces it is not just by mere impartation impartation will be fruitless if there is no understanding that supports it it first starts with water before it turns to wine it doesn't start with wine it is first water then it turns to wine are we together and i'm excited about the things that we're going to be learning i am a student of the wisdom of others i am a student of uncommon men and women who have been used by god across the earth over the years some dead some alive and so we are not inventors of these truths it will be arrogant to invent something at this level and and attempt to communicate it to such an intelligent people the things that we teach are not opinions the things that we teach have been tested they have been vetted by the integrity of god proven in the lives of those who have gone ahead of us to the end that we have the certainty of those things that we have believed luke chapter 4 please verse 1 to 4 and then we'll begin our discourse for tonight luke chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4 luke chapter 4 luke chapter 1 please forgive me luke chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4 i meant to say for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us please look up please go back to verse 1 the Bible says for every body of believers there are certain spiritual truths that are called most surely believed every truth should be believed but according to the measure of grace and the dimension of the investment of the spirit given there are certain truths that the average person in this ministry should have as a settled conviction can you imagine someone still doubting the reality of healing 
in a healing ministry can you imagine someone still doubting the efficacy of the blessing of the lord under the ministry of kenneth copeland can you imagine someone still doubting the efficacy of the power of faith under the ministry of someone like Papa Hagin or our father in the Lord Bishop David Oedipo? You, it, it, it's an anomaly. So there are things called the truths that are most surely believed. We're reading to verse 4. Verse 2, please. Even as they delivered them to us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word please celebrate reverend akila and his dear wife <laughs> blessings to you and good to see you sir hallelujah amen even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word verse 3 it says it seemed good to me also here is an apostle saying it is possible for a man to have perfect understanding you can have perfect accurate understanding of all things from the very first to write unto you in order most excellent theophilus why verse 4 please let read in concert one to read that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed that you no longer believe it just because you like the man of god teaching it but you catch the revelation of that truth yourself there are many people who believe truths not because they have gotten the revelation they like and they trust the communications of that truth as well meaning as that is it's not sufficient to produce results in your life remember what the woman at the well said come see a man she invited them they came on her invitation but when they encountered Jesus, they told her, they said, we believe not because you brought us. We have tasted of this thing for ourselves. And like a chef preparing a meal to ensure that there is balance, there is growth, there is stature. Life applicable truths that are say amen. amen. May the Lord transform our lives mightily and marvelously so saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive this was the praise of the four and twenty elders jesus did not die for them they were speaking on our behalf to receive for us power riches wisdom strength honor glory and blessings seven spiritual realities that were purchased for us in redemption and one of them is wisdom one of them is wisdom the bible tells us that wisdom is not just a psychological attribute there is a, a manifestation of the holy spirit that the holy spirit can find expression in the life of a man and a people as wisdom isaiah 11 and verse 12 verse 1 to put it in context there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of jesse he says and a branch shall grow out of his roots then he begins to list what we have come to know in the body of christ as the seven spirits of god or the sevenfold manifestation because it is one and the same spirit you read that in first corinthians chapter 12 it says all of this diversity of operations are done by one and the same spirit and so he gives us a list of the sevenfold manifestation of the holy spirit number one the spirit of the lord talks of authority and dominion number two the spirit of wisdom and understanding number three the spirit of counsel and might then number four the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord but now we are discussing the spirit of wisdom in ephesians chapter one paul was mentoring the church in ephesus part of his apostolic ministry let's go to verse 17 in ephesians chapter one from verse 17 paul began to pray and here was the content of his prayer that the god of our lord jesus christ even the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom so immediately we see that the spirit of wisdom is given it is not something that that dimension of wisdom 
is not something you learn it's not something you fish out from the earth it is given are we together write this down please there is a manifestation of the holy spirit upon the life of a believer as the spirit of wisdom the holy spirit can manifest in the life of a believer as the spirit storm is the secret behind the exploits of men in this kingdom wisdom the secret behind the exploits of men in deuteronomy was full of the spirit of wisdom for moses had laid his hands upon him as a result of that wisdom the children of israel hearkened unto him the same way they did to moses that means they did not just listen to moses because he was called moses there was this manifestation of the spirit of wisdom that reflected itself in uncommon leadership the same spirit came upon joshua psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 we're learning tonight it says thou through thy commandments had made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever before me we're reading to 100 it says i have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation last verse it says i understand more than the ancient because i keep thy precepts there is such a state where a man can access a level of spiritual intelligence and wisdom that is above and beyond that which this realm affords show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest psalms 104 and verse 24 i'm showing you from scripture that the wonder working power of god's wisdom in the life of a believer is the principal secret behind exploits in this kingdom please read with me it's projected ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy works uh-huh in wisdom thou hast made them all in wisdom thou hast made these manifold things in wisdom you have produced this uncommon level of results hallelujah it takes wisdom to excel in life it takes more than a sincere heart to excel in life it takes more than a godly conscience to excel in life there are many well-meaning people who love jesus christ with all their heart born again but it takes wisdom to excel in life it takes god's dimension of wisdom to bring about exploits it takes god's dimension of wisdom generally any kind of wisdom brings you in a position of advantage above the normal human being you'll be learning that there are different kinds of wisdom but i tell you from the authority of scripture any and god's dimension of wisdom will grant you access to results that defy common sense results that defy logic this is the realm god has called us into hallelujah are we together so it takes wisdom every time you see the exploits of an individual in ministry exploits in business exploits in governance any kind and any dimension of exploits i submit to you by the authority of the word of god that behind every command every uncommon result is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom if you're with me say amen, amen. the absence of the spirit of wisdom is costly it leaves you to the frailty of your intelligence it leaves you to the frailty of your perceptions the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is one of the systems of advantage that was given to the saints to help us manifest the fullness of the life and the power
power of God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 9. This is why God gave us all these great blessings. It says, um, verse 10 really, not 9. 3, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places by be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God there is a display of wisdom that God desires for creation to see hmm. what then is wisdom please write this down those following online following from whatever tv station just make sure that you have your note or you have something to just write or pen down this information they are valuable the bible says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh what is wisdom i'll first give you the dictionary definition of wisdom and then we'll explore our definition based on scripture the dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of having experience knowledge and good judgment so the dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of having experience the quality of having knowledge and the quality of having good judgment it also refers to the ability to use your knowledge and experience to make good decisions and sound judgment the dictionary also says that wisdom is the ability to use the knowledge that you have and the experience that you have to make good decisions and sound judgment James chapter 3 please before I give you the kingdom definition of wisdom which is an addition to these that we already have james chapter 3 and verse 13 the bible lets us know that there are principally four kinds of wisdom there are four kinds of wisdom that the bible identifies now um maybe psychology or some sort of some field of philosophy may come up with different angles but we are teaching and the reference of our teaching and spiritual communication is scripture are we together now so this is by no means an attempt to to downplay the intelligence of those who are authorities in the area of philosophy but you need to understand that the basis of our communication is scripture and so every truth that we bring is derived from the authority of scripture it says who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom right 14 it says but if ye have bitter envies and strife in your heart glory not and lie not against the truth verse 15 it says there is this wisdom that descended not this wisdom descended not from above so there is a wisdom that does not come from above but is earthly number one that is the first kind of wisdom that the bible officially identifies there is earthly wisdom number two there is sensual wisdom i'll explain that in a moment number three there is devilish wisdom there is earthly wisdom sensual wisdom devilish wisdom next verse and then it says for where envy and strife is there is confusion and every evil work 17 but then the last kind of wisdom the bible says is the wisdom that is from above there is earthly wisdom sensual wisdom devilish or demoniacal wisdom and then there is wisdom that comes from above please write this down what is earthly wisdom earthly wisdom talks of natural wisdom what you call common sense the the inherent ability to recognize right or wrong earthly wisdom talks of natural wisdom 
common sense that sense of intuitiveness the ability to recognize right or wrong instinctively that is natural wisdom or earthly wisdom number two there is sensual wisdom this has to do with your faculties of perception this is scientific wisdom this is philosophical wisdom wisdom that has come through studies wisdom that has come through experiments this is the second level of wisdom it's called sensual wisdom scientific philosophical wisdom that comes through studies wisdom that comes through experiments and then number three we have devilish or demonic wisdom what is that a sense of superior judgment that is outsourced from your fraternity with demon spirits there can be a sense of superior judgment a sense of judgment that is higher than the natural man's own but does that it was outsourced through your fraternity with demon spirits the kind of wisdom that comes through your alliance your fraternity and your covenant with demon spirits and then the bible tells us finally that we have the manifestation of wisdom that comes from above what is that godly wisdom supernatural wisdom the wisdom that comes as an impartation by the spirit of wisdom godly wisdom supernatural wisdom is god helping us hmm. let's define wisdom now from a kingdom perspective please write this down number one wisdom is defined as the accurate application of knowledge the accurate application of knowledge the accurate application of knowledge now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them the accurate application of knowledge or information number two wisdom is the supernatural ability listen carefully the supernatural ability to use the written or inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and provide solutions to life's problems i will take it again just be patient the supernatural ability to use the written both the written and inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life's problems this is called wisdom it is a supernatural ability the faculty the fortitude the ability to take advantage of the truths found in the written word and the inspired word that comes through the spirit that it helps you to make accurate decisions and then by it you provide supernatural solutions to life's problems this is called wisdom wisdom is related to advancement wisdom is related to wealth wisdom is related to exploits this is very important the bible lets us know that a man can be alive and yet lack wisdom that means the same way a doctor can diagnose a patient and say you have deficiency of calcium you are alive you are not dead you are still alive but there is deficiency of calcium deficiency of magnesium and that component is in a drug or some kind of treatment given to you and as you swallow those pills you are taken into your system the magnesium or the calcium that you do not have it can come in form of food it can come in form of a pill but once you take it you are aware that the calcium that i lack i'm now taking it in and usually they would give you a few indices that can help you know that that which you did not have has now arrived listen carefully you can actually look at your life as a report card and you can know whether or not there is the presence of wisdom 
and if you find out that there is the absence of wisdom the bible also leaves us with a strategy to transport wisdom from wherever it is into your life now this is powerful but you have to admit that men can lack wisdom james chapter 1 and verse 5 we'll go back we'll go back to that scripture but just to let you know from scripture it says if any of you lack wisdom just stop there forget about what you do later on but that there is a possibility that a man can walk on earth a man of god can lack wisdom a businessman can lack wisdom a politician can lack wisdom it has nothing to do with being good or bad the same way a car as wonderful as that car is it can lack fuel when the car does not have the gas that moves it forward it remains at that position everyone say wisdom so wisdom is the supernatural ability to take advantage of the truth from god's word both written and inspired and they now guide you to make excellent decisions in life and by the principles you are able to come up with supernatural solutions that attend to the needs first your need and then the need of those around you that any man who is able to attain this state is considered from scripture to carry the spirit of wisdom may that be your testimony tonight in the name of jesus christ hallelujah so we understand that as a result of redemption one of the sevenfold prophetic reality the blessings that have been given to the saints in christ one of them is wisdom and that more than just a gift of wisdom more than just the word of wisdom there is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom how to access wisdom We're on a journey right now like spiritual archaeologists let us find where this wisdom is seeing that the presence of wisdom is the secret to an excelling life an excelling ministry an excelling family an excelling business even an excelling spiritual life it then means that anyone who is serious with god and serious with destiny must search for this wisdom wherever it is and that when you find it because the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing we're getting there shortly it says in all you're getting get wisdom get understanding he said exalt her and she shall promote you she will put an ornament a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her look at wisdom speaking to you he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness that those who seek me early those who love me they will find me there is timing to the pursuit of wisdom lack of wisdom is costly especially in the world that we live in today follow me please to the book of job job 28 be patient and i'd like you to carry the determination of an archaeologist as we study this scripture we are searching for wisdom we want to find it and so desperately open our hearts to embrace it are you ready surely mm, job is speaking now how many of you know that there is a dimension of wisdom that comes through pain when you suffer beyond the threshold there is an impartation the haziness that foolishness brings can be eroded through the presence of pain this man at this time he's lost everything his reputation whatever it is sometimes you just need to lose all these things the prodigal son provided he had supplies his wisdom began to diminish until he got to a point where he was feeding with the swine the bible never said the holy ghost spoke to him the bible said he came to himself look the kind of wisdom that came out of that pain surely there is a vein for the silver and there is a place for gold where it is found is that true do we agree with this statement 
of course there are gold mines there are silver mines he says iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone uh-huh he set it an end to darkness and searched out all perfections the stones of darkness the shadows of death next verse please it says the flood break it out from the inhabitants you know and they are dried up they are gone away from men it's a long reading just be patient it says as for the earth out of it cometh bread good information for you you're searching for where bread is the bible tells you it's not in a bakery bread is found from the earth that means there is something you can do to the earth to command and force your portion out of it let me tell you what this means this is not where i'm teaching i just thought it was a point i should not let to just pass like that this earth is not just talking of the ground it's also talking of men that the secret to your bread is men so when god wants to give you bread he brings you to encounter men next verse verse six and the stones of it are the place of sapphires and it had the dust of gold there is a path which no fowl know it you know how high the fowl can fly but it says there is a path which no fowl knoweth, and the vultures eye hath not seen the lion's whelps have not trodden it nor the fierce lion passed by it remember what we are looking for we are looking for the location of wisdom he put it forth his hand upon the rock he overturned the mountains by the roots uh-huh he cut it out rivers from among rocks and his eyes see it every precious thing keep reading he binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden he brings forth to light verse 12 it says but where shall wisdom be found so look 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 the look the 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 artistry of job he begins by showing us where some of the things we admire on earth he says their location has been found we don't have a problem looking for where gold is where silver is where iron is men have used advanced technology to excavate rocks to find minerals but there is a particular spiritual resource we are still looking for and job said where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding hmm. Our journey begins it says man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living that means cbn does not have it that means our institutions do not have this kind of wisdom it already gives you a clue that as you begin this archaeological journey let me tell you where not to waste your time expo it is not found in the land of the living there is a kind that is found in the land of the living but not this one next verse the depth saith it is not in me find other minerals but not this one the sea do you know what is hidden in the sea abundance in the earth hides in the sea the bible says but this wisdom the sea says among the resources that were hidden there this one is not part of them The Bible says it cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir and the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. And you are not looking for it? it says and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls it says for the price of wisdom is above rubies the toppers of ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold we're still looking for wisdom whence then comet wisdom and where is the place of understanding hallelujah seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and it is kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of its fame come on look at the testifiers of the exploits of wisdom that destruction and and death 
came to hold a mic and give a testimony that as we go around destroying people we have heard of this wisdom the fame we have heard of it that anyone who possesses this can beat us hands down we have heard of the fame thereof here is your answer God understandeth the way thereof and he knoweth the place thereof so after confusing us and leading us from pillar to post he now tells us that listen there is no archangel that holds this wisdom that God only God knows the way of wisdom and he is the exclusive custodian of this priceless commodity the wisdom that comes from above the wisdom that comes from above please pay attention I have seen people who carry in bodily form the spirit of wisdom I have seen people manifest natural wisdom I have seen people manifest scientific and philosophical wisdom with the various degrees of results that support the kind of wisdom they carry I have also seen people access demonic wisdom but I have seen a few people and I'm glad that this happened in my lifetime people who access superior levels of wisdom many years ago as the Lord was preparing me for ministry I listened to Pat Robertson the founder of 700 club cbn and he said as a young man when he was about to start ministry he prayed for three things he said lord give me wisdom number two give me favor number three give me the anointing of the holy ghost i wrote it down quickly and i prayed the same prayer too i said lord i don't trust this my head i don't trust what i know give me wisdom number two give me favor and number three give me the anointing of the holy spirit and then the holy ghost spoke to me he said follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise the proof of passion is pursued dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline